You're back. You ready to learn some more? Been here for a couple of hours now. Got chicken stock on, fix some leaky plumbing, and I need you to really pay attention because we're going to do one of my favorite dishes today. So there's a lot to learn. And we've got to really knuckle through this. Not only are we just going to do one version, we're going to do three versions of bak kute. It loosely translates as meat bone tea, but I like to call it pork bone broth or pork bone soup because we're using spare ribs. So I got this beautiful side of pork belly with the bone on. I'm going to just take the bones off the belly and then we're going to stew them with a number of herbs and spices. But like I said, we're doing this three different ways, so we better crack on. I'm just going to use a really nice sharp knife and just feel where the end of the ribs are. You can feel the top of the pork ribs and that's where you're going to be cutting into. So I'm feeling, I'm just feeling. So slice. And that's the, if you come this side where I am. I'm going to go back up here. Now you can leave as much of the meat or as little as the meat on you want. I want to save some of the pork belly to make, oh gosh, what should we make with it? So your back, so maybe some crispy pork belly or some toyo back. Lots of different choices we can do. What would you like to learn next? Leave us a comment. Now I've got very little hands, so I'm doing this in little bits. So now that we've got these ribs, we can just cut down them like so. Can you go and grab me a tray, please? Now you see how big these bones are? So these pork ribs are a little bit big, so what we're going to do is cut them in half so that we've got smaller little nuggets and then we're going to blanch them. I'm going to save this pork belly for another dish. So you see I've got some skin on, so maybe we're thinking some crispy pork or some stewed pork. What do you think? Right, so I've trimmed up the short ribs. We've got them cut horizontally, so they cut through the ribs. So they've got smaller little ribs. These are perfect for the bakute, just for ease of eating, but it's absolutely fine to keep them whole if you can't cut them with a saw like me. The next important step is to blanch them in some boiling water to get rid of those impurities and scum. Come over. Right, pot of boiling water. I'm gonna stick the pork ribs in and add a little bit of ginger in there as well to blanch it with. I'm just gonna bring that to a boil and you'll see all that scum come to the top. This will take a couple of minutes. Make sure they're completely covered. We're just going to remove the pork bones. I'm going to give them a rinse. Discard the water and the ginger. I'm just going to give these a quick rinse. That's the pork bones ready to turn into the pork broth. Cover it in water. Now an absolute ton of garlic. You don't have to peel the skins. Garlic is never enough. So why are we doing three versions? Well, bakute across different regions of Singapore and Malaysia have different variations and different preferences. And I'm not hit one to start a war here of which one is better than the other. It's down to you guys to decide which one you'd prefer. So in Singapore, they have the, the teotiu version, which is very peppery, aromatic, really highly rich in collagen because you're allowed to like put any of the pork bones, the trotters, everything, you name it, goes in there. In the Malaysia, the Hokkien version is very typically a dark and broth, very, very herby, aromatic. It's almost medicinal in um, flavor. 
Um, and selling back a tea in Malaysia is highly competitive, that they've even developed a dry version, which I'm really excited to try with you today. So let's go and have a look at the spice packs that we're using to make these dishes. So you can get these bakate spices at any Southeast Asian grocers. I highly recommend you get them. Save you a lot of time trying to source all the individual herbs and spices yourself. This one I'm going to be making here is a Tiatu version, which is very typical in Singapore. This is a brand that's very well known in Singapore. Very intensely peppery. Smell that. Really, really intensely peppery. That's how Singaporeans prefer to have their bakute. So I've got loads of the garlic in there, the spice mixes, the pork ribs, and I'll let that come to a boil, skim off any impurities that come to the top. Hang on, I'm gonna sneeze from all the pepper. You could toast some, you could toast some extra white peppercorns and add them in there. But I think those spice mixes are actually peppery enough. Now, come over. I've already, when I got here this morning, I already prepared a Hokkien version of the bakute. So this has a whole more, this has a lot more different herbs and uh, herbs inside. Like I said, this one's very aromatic. It's got dark soy sauce in. Very typical what you find in Malaysia, but just look at the different color of the spice mixes. That one's fairly light. I won't mix spoons. And look how dark this one is. So this is simmering away with a number of spices, like licorice, angelica, and this, if I had to choose, is kind of the one I'm used to and brought up with from home. I absolutely adore it because it just feels very nourishing and restorative. And I love that when you come home and you've got the pot of this cooking, simmering away in the kitchen, it literally fills the whole house with this aroma of like roasted garlic and pork, and it's just really comforting. I put a paper on top, which is called a cartouche, and that's gonna stop the liquid from evaporating too quickly. I'm just gonna leave that over there. So I'm gonna leave that over there to stew for a couple of hours, probably about two to four hours, I think is best. Some of these spice packets say you only need to stew it for half an hour, but I think that's absolute rubbish. I prefer the meat to slightly fall off the bone, and so four hours is best. And if you're a real purist, eight hours overnight and then have dinner tomorrow, it's gonna to be perfection. Right, so we got the two versions, the first two versions of our bakute. Look at that broth. That is gonna be a pure hug in a spoon. <laughs> hug in a spoon. Hug in a spoon. Um, and you can see, if I pick up one of the bones, look at that meat, it's just, falling off, look at that, oh. I see, that bit there is probably my favorite bit to suck on. <laughs> Sorry, children. <laughs> that bit there is my favorite bit to enjoy. So, I'm gonna portion this up. Kind of, what I prepped earlier is, of course, it's got the bone broth, but to make this kind of a really wholesome meal, I've got like some little jam lettuce that I've been, I've washed and I've soaked in some um, ice water to make it really nice and crispy. And a little bit of a twist here because I've got a uh, watercress, UK watercress. Now this leaf is really, really rich in iron but I've chosen it to go with bakute because it's really peppery and because the watercress is so high in iron and the watercress kind of like wilts as soon as that bakute goes on. It's a nice easy way of getting a little bit of extra iron into the kids. So I'm gonna put that on the bottom, grab a couple of those nuggets of pork. So of course include the bones Got a couple of the mushrooms there. If you want, if you're hardcore, a little garlic to enjoy. And that is a very homely bowl of bakute. I remember my sisters and I would always fight over the last spare rib 
because when we grew up, actually, we didn't have a lot. And this dish, my mother would always choose this dish to make for us because although I showed you earlier this, you know, expensive pork belly and you can use expensive cuts like that, but with the spare rib, it's actually a really thrifty way of making a really wholesome meal out of not much. And like I say, we would always enjoy every single last bite. And that broth as well takes up all that flavor of the pork. So it felt like you've got a really large meal, um, a really satisfying meal. Because I would serve this with some freshly steamed rice. Um, or you, again, you could have it, or you could have it with the utiao, so the fried dough sticks to dip into. I'm showing you these two because these are really, really popular in Singapore and Malaysia. They're not going anywhere. They're extremely popular. So I reckon if you see it in, on the menu, please do try it and let me know what your thoughts are. And if you do, if you do love it, leave us a comment. So the next version I'm gonna make is the dry bakute. Now this is something that I've not really come across much. And a lot of you have been telling me to try it since we last did that last video with Uncle Roger, who recommended we should do a bakute burger. Now, I've been wrecking my reins about how to do a bakute burger. It's part of my job as a chef. And the great thing about being a chef is trying new flavors, new dishes from around the world. So let's move on to the dry bakute. So to prepare for this dry bakute, I've already got the bakute I've made earlier. So I'm gonna take some of the ribs Carefully take out some of the ribs and keep some of that broth aside for later. I've got some dried shrimp that's been hydrating. Do you want to come in? I've got some dried shrimp that I've been hydrating and actually some dried cuttlefish. Now, you probably haven't come across something like this before, but this will give a little umami MSG bomb in our dish. I'm gonna cut it up into small pieces so you won't actually see a piece of cuttlefish. Alrighty. So I'm gonna start prepping a little bit of garlic and onion. You can use shallots. I'm so sure Uncle Roger would prefer. Uh, red onion, but I've got white onion here because that's what I've got on hand. So I've got my seasoned clay pot, but uh, because we don't have any gas here, we've had to go and purchase like a little converter. It's doing its little job. But if you don't have one of the converters, you can just do this in a normal wok, pot, pan. But I just wanted to show you how it traditionally be served. So I'm gonna put in my onions. Actually, heat up a little bit of oil. I'm gonna add in my dried shrimp that's been soaked. Let's chop up the cuttlefish just into smaller pieces. We're frying this in the oil for a couple of minutes until it's aromatic. That's basically flavoring that oil. Just mincing up some garlic cloves and we've got some red chili peppers, so red chilies. All right, adding minced garlic, chilies. Now I swiped a couple of these uh, dried chilies from my mum's cupboard, so I'm a little bit terrified how spicy that's gonna be. So I'm just looking for the onions and garlic to sweat a little bit with the dried chilies and that's gonna release all the aromats before we add in the pork. All right, I'm just gonna cut up some okra to smaller pieces, sort of bite-sized chunks. I think that would be enough. I'm gonna saute those. Right, the okra is sauteed nicely. We've got our pork bones that are from the broth. You see how tender they are. They're gonna go in. Let's go quite a lot. Add about a tablespoon oyster sauce, dark soy. And depending on how thick we want it, and add in a couple of spoons of this broth. This is smelling pretty good. I'm gonna put the lid on, I'm gonna let that come to a boil, and I want this dry bakery tape to be quite sticky, as I've seen in some pictures, so I'm gonna let that liquid reduce right down. So I had to admit defeat. This induction is not working with my clay pot. One point for fire 
and gas. I've transferred it to a pan and I can see now it's reducing away really nicely and that is coated our bacote ribs with this lovely sticky glaze. I'd say that's nearly ready to serve. Adding a little bit of MSG. This smells really incredible. I think I'd definitely serve this with um, some rice. And actually, I think it'd be really great to have this with a little bit of the broth on the side because, I mean, to me, the broth is also the star of the show, so I wouldn't want to leave that out. Oof, it's a hearty portion here. Just finishing it off with a little bit of coriander. And there we have it. Three different types of bakute. Bakute. This chilies are really spicy. It tastes like bakute, it is bakute. I think this is a winner. Man, that is fire. I am absolutely knackered. Three bakutes was a lot of work. <laughs> Next time I suggest something like that, you tell me I'm crazy, okay? Let me know in the comments, if you've tried this, which one would you choose? I actually have a couple of ideas on how I want to take this dish and turn it into a burger. I bet so I'm going to head off now and start scribbling my notes before they all disappear. But I'm definitely going to go and make this disappear. Catch you again next time. <laughs>